Thank you very much, Shox. I'm still joined by Deficio. I'm still Medic myself as well. And we're going to jump onto Summoner's Rift for the final game of the day. It's the marquee matchup. It's Misfits, the undefeated versus Vitality. Yeah. The upcoming upstarts, I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah, overall with this uh, new lineup here. Still, what a crazy draft. Almost felt like Misfits kind of ran out of options for how they could use the Galio. Because as, as Whippo and the guys in the analysis talked a lot about, like, they don't have the easy engage tool that sets up a Galio ulti. Yeah. It feels like it's Hansama jumping in with then Galio going in onto him if, he, if they want to get to the back line very easily. But there's a lot of pick potential, mainly because they have Talia jungle and, of course, the pike for Mickey. This could be one of the big games for him. Meanwhile, I feel like with Vitality, if you ever needed ways to start fights, well, you got them right there. Yeah, you've got a few. You know, you've got the Call of the Forge Guard, you've got the Paranoia, you've got Sleepy Trouble Bubble, uh, you've got Swain with the Never Move, you've got Jack Troll with the Taunt. The I amount of CC, man, they can change so much CC in these big 5 on 5 teamfights. And whenever you do split up against a Nocturne, Joko showed earlier today when he played it in Giants win over G2, how you can just catch people off so, so easily. We get an Invade level 1, and we get a spicy tweet from Yamada Cannon as well. Said, happy that Misfits beat G2, so we can abolish all doubt in one game about who is going to be at the top at the end of this split. Vitality trying to abolish all doubt about whose jungle this is as well. They start off the red buff. Taunt lands. There's a lot of damage already onto Maxwell. Here's the flash away. The ignite down as well, but can't quite get in range. Gilius flashes forward. It's jungler v jungler. And the German wonder kid comes out on top. Gilius with burst block. Maxwell wanted to land some poke while waiting for Senkux to move down and collapse onto them. It's a crazy level one. It's not over yet. <laughs> But it is Gilius with first spot and the red buff. So he's now ahead of Maxlow. What a great start in the 1v1 jungle battle. So good for Vitality and so good for Gilius as well. He gets the bragging rights. He gets the red buff. He's going to go up towards his top side as well. Secure himself that scuttle crab and then go towards red to make sure... Oh, Maxlow he could go for blue. Can't if he wanted to. If he wanted to be super, super annoying. And nah, the problem for him is the top lane is pushing against him. He can't do it. There's no flash. Alfari would kill him. So he has to just settle for the Rift Scuttler. Got a little bit greedy there. I was like, oh yeah, just go straight to the other camp and kill him again. But would be too risky. You can already see Alfari actually move down from top lane. We already have a first for this split. It's the first time Misfits have ever given up first blood this split. Perhaps it'll be the first time they lose as well. Let's see. So I think the call here for Maxlow is, hey, let's try and keep them occupied, land a little bit of poke, and then have Senkux come down. Because Senkux goes mid first to push the wave. So that right now, Tezuke potentially could be losing out on a lot of experience if this entire wave stays there for too long and gets to go to the turret. But because of the flash taunt, Max Lord drops too low. And Diplomacy. while Vitality a spent a lot of flashes, they do pick up first blood plus red. Question is, can we get an early gank from Max Lord against a no flash target? Then he can suddenly actually make the level one probably not worth it. So then you have to look for lanes that will set him up because he doesn't have the flash himself. So flash seismic shove isn't on the cards. You're looking for CC from his lane. Something like the pike in the bottom lane is an ideal target. Yeah, I mean, all the lanes uh, for him right now could actually set it up. Galio taunt mid, pike, of course, in bottom lane. There is cleanse on Dizuke. That's important. Fun fact, with the bottom lane, first time they actually get to play Kaiser and pike. Of course, Kaiser was not available in the European playoffs uh, last split. And uh, Ansama's played all the other AD carries that are viable in the meta, except for this one. So we're going to have to see how we can play with it. Maxwell is near the bottom side. That's where there is no flash on Jack Troll. So there is a chance to set up a kill against him. Mickey can flash him and, and guarantee the stun. Maxwell waiting in the wings, but he's just going to be doing his ah, he's too low as well. Uh, himself. Uh, yeah, we saw Attila and Jack Troll as well getting the scuttle crab for themselves. So he's trying to deny as much from Maxlaw as possible. Weepo talked about how he thinks Nocturne is the better of the two jungle picks between Nocturne and Talia. Seems to be working out for him. Yeah, he made it very clear. Pre-6, Talia does have the advantage. After level 6, however, there's so much kill pressure from a Nocturne. And with this start, Gilius gets to completely avoid the first few levels. Maxlaw is not a factor in the game right now. He's trying to catch up. So this is the perfect start for Nocturne, who already wants to just hit level 6 and then look for a big kill. Across the board, very even for these lanes. Only really Gilius has the advantage. And if you want to watch one of the lanes, it's a tiller in the bottom lane that we have on our point of view camera today. Twitch.tv forward slash Riot Games 2 if you want to see how he pilots the Swain alongside Jack Shaw's Shen as well. I believe we will get a sneak peek into that POV stream pretty soon as well. Well, I'm just looking at the rest of the map here. Maxwell level 3. No camps for him to take. Tough spot to be in. 
Gilius has a Grump still on the bottom side, so he's going to be level 5 after that next camp. Maxwell is still waiting for stuff to respawn. He's also spotted by a good ward from Couple Shot. So at the moment, Vitality doing a great job in the early game. And that was one of the things when we looked at this at the start of the day, was we looked at two of the best early game teams in Europe fighting each other. So the level one plan and how they're tracking Maxwell now has been perfect from Vitality. They're really just waiting for Gilius to hit that level six mark. We mentioned how we have ulti from an Octane, ulti from an Orn. Like it is impossible to avoid the fight if you are a misfit. So they're the ones who need to be proactive themselves if they want to properly use Galio Orn. And the difficulty with being proactive is they don't have all of those engage tools that Whipper was talking about on the analyst desk. It's Alfari charging in or it is Han Sama able to reach the backline with Mickey. Because that's the thing with Pike, you're squishy, but you can't always get to the backline because you have so much mobility, you're just going to die very quickly if you stay. We have that invisibility as well with the Ghost Water Dive. So running onto that backline, trying to get something to happen, and then getting the extra resistances from Senkux on the hero's entrance. And all the things we're highlighting with the lack of clear engage makes the comp very hard to play. And that's kind of the thing. A, a draft can look really bad if the team is not executing it properly. So what happens bottom side? That's what lands the taunt. Pull back on Hans Sammer as well. The Ignite Hans Sammer first to fall in it. And Mickey cannot defend his AD carry. This is why a lot of people do not want to give away Swain if you want to play traditional AD carry in the bottom lane, because the moment he gets onto you, his damage is so high, and the double CC from taunt into pullback from a Swain means that you're stuck there taking all the damage. And another great moment for Vitality, and I hope everyone who jumped over to the stream to watch Attila play this one got to enjoy the second kill. Well, we can have a look at how Attila's reacting after the kill. You can see in your bottom left oh, corner. Oh, he's pushing. Yeah, he's pushing at the lane. He does play in windowed mode, so it's important that you notice the black bars around the edge of the screen, and purely because he doesn't want to play at the full resolution of the monitor that he has. Oh, CS1, CS. Okay. I Two. Know. Yeah, yeah, normally when we do mm. this, I Oh, he missed one. it. Oh. Cannon? Oh, we didn't get to see Mr. Cannon. Yeah, maybe he gets it. You never know. Gilea starting up the Infernal here is level 5. We'll be looking to get that level 6 pretty soon. Maxdor is on the bottom side of the jungle as well, so maybe we'll see Misfits trying to react. Maxdor actually hits 6 first. Here comes the possibility of an engage. Weaver's Wall used, Seismic Shove knocks him away as well, but the Infernal Drake's still there. Vitality won't want to give this one up. You can see Attila trying to get onto the back line. Gilea's demon, Gilea's gets the smite fight, and Vitality are coming up huge in this fight as well. Call of the Forge God lands across the all. 5v5, one down, Jack Troll, the first to forge. Suzuki knocked away, Attila running for the hills. Cabo Shard caught out by Han Sama, the flash in by Max Law. Two kills, two misfits. Max Law needed two more seconds on his smite. He didn't have two more seconds because Gilea's just flashed in and took it, but that man Vitality couldn't really fight. No level six on the Nocturne. Maxlock got it from the red buff. He just focused on catching up, inexperience, perfect timing with the fight as well. And Alfari joined and landed a great pop ulti to just deny the rest of Vitality. This was 2-0 just 30 seconds ago, and Vitality in full control. They were getting the Drake. They had the advantage, but after this play where Maxlock is six, he gets in to the Dragon area, and now all of Vitality, they're not ready to fight. Zoe's still mid lane. Orn is not tp down yet. Let's look at a smite cooldown. Of course, it's cheating a little bit in the Spectator one, but as you can see, just needing about one more second. No way to really take the fight, though, for Vitality, because they lose a member instantly. The backline of Misfits are completely safe, and that ulti from Alfari makes sure that no one can actually save Kapo Shard. Great stuff all round by Misfits. Two react was a 5v5 brawl in the river, and really, Misfits probably think they come out on top of it, although Vitality get the Infernal Drake, which is always a benefit to a team that likes to fight as often as Vitality do. I mean, this was supposed to be just an Infernal Drake for nothing, That's right? True. So uh, Misfits picking up two kills while they still lost Drake is definitely worth it for them. Uh, they were in a tough spot before here, especially because they were losing the bottom lane. And that only gets worse, by the way, when Swain is level six. Because then if you try and auto attack him, he pops ulti, he laughs at you, he one shots you. And you're just like, yeah, great, nice life. See what happens. Both bot lanes have decided to switch up towards the top side of the map. That's why Alfari is down in this bottom side river. It's because there's no dragon left for them to fight over, so Rift Herald will be the next objective. It is true, and that's why also Gilius on top side could be super effective for Vitality, because there's no flash on Hansama. That should be a kill for his team if he does use ulti there. For now, he's on bottom lane, though. Misfits 
sitting around can start the Rift Hell instantly because they got all the control wards up here. I think Vitality are too slow so on swapping to the other side of the map. They should be on this side here contesting this. Right, so has started they're on their way. Toad. As you say, they're on their way. Gilius needs to get some vision in that river though because otherwise Maxo is going to be able to get the Herald before he can even react. You can see Gilius maybe looking for something so in now. the mid lane. Rift Hell down to about 4,000. Gilius doesn't know this is happening. It's actually sitting. Oh, Max Law. They reacted in time. Misfits did not want to use all members to try and burn it down as fast as possible. He's standing it again. Gilius should be aware that he hasn't seen the Talia in There's a while. The ping. There's the ping coming out on it. I think they realize now that it's probably being done. There's so much work ground there as well for <laughs> Yeah, he's like, Max oh, I wonder what's happening here. Uh, Gilius just going to clear out the vision though. Ripto not done by Misfits. So some time wasted in the end for Max Law. Vitality. Looking for a play topside, again we highlighted Hansama, no flash on his side. If you get the kill into Rift Hall, it's a massive advantage for Vitality. Whenever you play Nocturne, long cooldown on that ulti. It's one of those spells where if you do fail the first one, oh, it feels horrible. It definitely does. And I was actually talking to Jack Troll about the Shen support pick as well. He says if you fail the first Shen support ulti as well, you don't get more than just a kill out of it, you don't get more than just a, a small objective out of it, it's actually not worth playing Shen support. So looking to see how he uses that first ultimate now that he's hit level six and has the stand united, probably in conjunction with Gilius when they go for that fight. Yeah, that is of course the, the all-in combo. Hopefully you get more than a kill just from that one, uh, obviously when it happens or if it happens. Luckily you don't have to do it. Uh, I think a lot of Shen support players have found out is you can just peel with Shen because uh, your W is so strong, especially against people who like to play AD carries. Yep. Uh, in this case here, luckily for Kai'Sa, there's ways for her to kind of deal damage around it with her abilities. But generally though, as a Shen, you don't have to dive the back line uh, with your team because Gilius, he will go in and try and one-shot someone every time. And after he's done that, as long as you keep Jizuka and Attila alive, you still win the fight. Never Yet to see Vitality pull the trigger on that paranoia though. You can see Mickey catches oh, Mickey. out Jizuke. Jizuke unwilling to burn his flash. The power of Pike here sneaks his way through the mid lane. Didn't even have to come in from a side or anything. Jizuke had flash available but didn't want to use it when he saw the hook. Then you die. Instantly. Great pick and this is why Mickey is one of the most important players on Misfit's side because he makes the plays. He forces the enemy team to always try and respect where he can be on the map. Now it's around the Rift Held. Kaisa is around. Sengus might actually sneak behind him. He can flash over the wall in case they stay. I think Vitality have realized that uh, they don't know where the poppy is. Could quite easily be five members of Misfits up here. And this should have been. Gilly is ulting on top side, killing the Kaisa, taking the Rift Held. But Misfits bottom played passive. They stayed back. They didn't want to give the chance. And now you're level eight. You haven't used your ulti yet on the Nocturne side, and you did not take that window you had to actually kill the enemy AD carry. And we've talked so often about how strong Misfits are in the early game. Even after a setback at level one, they're still able to come out on top. Coming up to the 15 minute mark, it's even in gold. They have the Rift Herald in their back pocket, so they can look to try and take that first tower of the game. And well, bottom side, Gilius will steal a red buff. Hard claim to tower dive a Poppy. Luckily, uh, if he does go for it, there is only magic resist on her, so his damage will count for a lot. But it's hard to get close enough to actually take her down in time. Also, then you have to dodge around her ulti. I'm still also looking for the Swain pick. Two assist. He got that first kill, or kill with Jackal in the bot lane. But Misfits, Stool lane, are just giving up all pressure. Which is one of the first times they've done this, all split long. They normally are the ones pushing. But because they know they can lose this matchup so hard to Vitality, they're staying back and they're giving up everything in the lane. It's not costing them too much at the moment though, like being, stepping back, scaling up on the Kaiser, getting up towards that Ginsu's Rage Blade isn't the end of the world for them. Inferno Drake has been started here by Vitality as the teleport comes in from Misfits. It's Pike joining the fray, but now he's not in the best of spots. Can of course just leap over the wall. Exactly, stop the root Infernal though. I'm glad we get Infernals in this game, so both teams are fighting around him. Well, yesterday you said you loved Cloud Drakes though. Uh, in that one game. Okay. Against Poke, Cloud is great. Let's see what happens though, we might get a fight actually. Jizuke is caught out. Once again, not in the best of shapes. Using the redemption on himself, there's a call of the Forge God. They've engaged straight on towards that front line. That's the combo you want to see if your Vitality Mickey goes down. Suki baited everyone. They thought they could just jump in and try and force him to flash over the wall. Instead, the Pike gets caught out. That was a massive engage from Vitality. They get a second Infernal Drake on their side with multiple members scaling so well of AD or AP. Big, big deal for Team Vitality. And 
I would say worth it yeah. on the Nocturnal. They burnt a bunch for it, though. Call of the Forge Guard, Demonic Ascension from Attila, and the Paranoia as well. You yeah. get second Infernal. Yeah, you I'll get second it. Infernal. You take it every day of the week, but it does mean Misfits have a chance here to maybe make a play while those Ultimates are still down. We'll see if they decide to do that, or if they still concede the pressure as they have been doing for the rest of this game. You have to remember that it's, again, forcing a straight-up fight is difficult, they're more looking to force plays in the side lanes where they can use Galliold from mid to a side. Suka might offer an opening in mid to go with the Rift Held. That's obviously the one they picked up earlier. We'll take a bit of time before it gets there. Yeah, they have to clear the way first, otherwise the Herald has to do it herself. Jack Troll. Looks like Misfits just set up a death push up towards the top side of that and call out Jack Troll unaware. Yeah, he got so surprised. That should be a mid lane turret as well. Misfits instantly answering here despite losing the Drake and Mickey from before. Good response. Yeah, great stuff from Misfits. We said they had the opportunity while those ultimates were down, and they utilized it to great effect. They got way more than I expected. Yeah. I thought they would maximum just get a mid lane turret and uh, nothing more, but taking down Jack Troll as well, that's a bonus, because look who got the kill. It's Hansama. Yeah, getting him those kills early on on the Kaiser is great. Expect him to go back and pick up the Ginsus, and here you can see ah. Jack Troll. Oh. Didn't even have to face check anything. He just got pulled over the wall by Mickey. The skewer to that. That would be pretty painful. It definitely would. Especially one made of bone. But bone to be fair, there's a lot of things in this game that would really hurt in real life if, if it hit you. It's true. <laughs> I should think about, like, that's, that would be a good game to play at some I point. Just think, think about how much things would hurt. Yeah, like, getting hit by a pike is probably one of the things that would hurt the least. Okay, so what do you think would hurt the most? Carth is all. You're literally getting lightning in your face. See, I think Malphite. Because that's a mountain coming down, like, exploding on top of you. Okay, that probably also would. Yeah, yeah, that would hurt a lot. This one, again, is kind of nothing. Yeah, but as, like, a, as a human getting a bone skewer to the back, it's probably pretty painful. Yes. Oh. Never experienced but, but it mountain, myself. Max a mountain, mountain as well. It's going to seismic shove in here. Jack Troll able to dodge around to the side, but the seismic shove and the pull back. Here comes the of Gilius in the midst of the whole fight. Call of the Forge got used to try and reset it by Vitality, but now Canvas Shard is on the front line. Jizuke coming in from the side as well. Needs to land these paddle stars if he's able to win this fight. Exhaust, Senkuk's knocked away onto the Vitality members, but Jackal comes back in with a taunt. It's only onto Alfari. They just don't have the damage. Jackal down. Jizuke running for the hills. He's trying to dodge back from Senkuk's flash taunt. Cleanse straight away from Jizuke. Lack of damage is the key word here after all the big ultis. Oh! Oh, Jizuke jumps back in. He's still looking for it. He's oh, playing with portals to Fischio. Didn't hit the bubble. Nope. That. Yeah. Didn't that, know where Senkux was. So he expected true. Senkux to be running down past his blue buff. I know. He knew he could always jump back again. Looking for more. Nope. Still not finding anyone. In the end, big ult is used in the start. After that, Gillis had to flash out. And when Jizuke joined, no one could really continue the fight from Vitality's side. No one could actually get in and get the kill. So in the end, it's Jaxwell going down. He is still not that tanky on a Shen here. Very, very close game. Super back and forth. We still have to remember double Infernal on Vitality. They're down 1k gold, sure. But in terms of, in terms of effective stats, those Drakes are going to give way more. In terms Later of, on, at least. In terms of scaling as well, we gave it to Vitality. In if they were able to get to... Oh, actually, that was last game. One. That was last game. Yeah, that was to Giants. Uh, yeah, Hans Summer probably scales pretty well in this game. It so. definitely does. Yeah, maybe maybe a balance between the two? I think so much of it comes down to the initial engage, if it's uh, Vitality starting it when it comes to late game fights. Yeah. If Gilius is unable to actually kill a target when he jumps in, Misfits takes the fight in the late game. We're not there yet. We're only 18 minutes into wow, this Well, that's one. pretty late for current EUS, yes? <laughs> that's, that's true. Mickey's still around. Support war. Mm. See, that's when you feel great as a support. I mm, In front I, of two people, you kill a control ward? I mean, yeah. when, when I'm playing Pike, I feel pretty good when I steal all the kills. Let's be honest. That's fair. It's kind of what For me, it's more the... I start the control ward, they move in to stop me. I step away, they think they won the war for a moment. I step back and I kill it, I moon, and I walk out. Ah, that's the a, mooning! That's, that's the great play. That's making a mistake, Division. That's the great play. I want to just bring our attention back to uh, one of the unsung heroes on this Misfit lineup, though. Alfari has been so consistent throughout the course of this split. First in KDA, first in kills and assists at 15 minutes, least deaths at 15. Hasn't died before the 15-minute mark yeah. in any of his games. Only has three deaths, I think, across the course of the entire split. And although he gives up some pressure in the lane to play these tanks, he's doing everything he needs to for Misfit. He's doing it for the team, and that's why you don't get to talk so much about it because he is just on that tank so often. He's left a bit on his own while Misfits are playing around mid and bot lane with Max Lore. So he's just been kind of the backbone. They're a solid, consistent player who almost never 
makes a mistake. And that's important when you're playing a tank, because that's what your team needs. And he's someone who does not lose that side of the map where you don't want to play. This game is done well in the Poppy Good Ulti so far, but Vitality, they're grouping five man mid. They're looking at that turret right in front of them. Sadly, you can't really use the Nocturne ult right here. You want a more open fight. All right, so great stuff from Mickey here to actually zone away Vitality from Han Sama, because all that needed to happen was a paddle star to come out, and Jizuke would have taken down the French AD carry. Now, you can still see Vitalities are playing towards this Group 5 mid composition. They're going to bring out the call of the Forge God. Hits out Fari, pulls him back. Gilius jumps in, can't quite get enough damage down. Jackdaw there as well, and that is a dead hand summer, but Gilius loses his life for it. Jackdaw now running for the wins as well, alongside Jazuke, trying to get out of this fight. Jazuke from the side, the panel star does not connect. That's two for Misfits. Attila, though, goes into the demon form and chunks out two Misfits, losing out on this fight, and they're running up towards the top side of it. Jazuke looking for the paddle star across the wall. Won't quite connect the sleep will though onto Alfari, and this may be his fourth death of the split. Not much he can do. You can only tank for so long, my man. Vitality clean up. And just before this from Vitality was sieging, we said here you can't really use the Nocturne ulti. So they backed away, they stepped away, and suddenly it's a very long lane. And then you call the horn with Orn, and then you get the engage from Gilius, and you actually manage to kill Hansama in the back line. We have to remember, during that Nocturne ult, it's really hard to peel for your back line. You don't see anything, you can't properly use the Galio ult either. This is how Vitality plays in the summer split. It's not one three one split push with Jisuke. It's five man group. Dive the enemy team. Ulti not used by Senkuk yet because again he's denied vision in this fight, and therefore he loses his AD carry. He loses the entire fight because we got to remember after the initial engage, there is still a Swain yeah. and a Zoe sitting on the side of Vitality, able to deal the consistent DPS. That's the thing, if Talia and Kaisa are dead, you just don't have damage as Misfits. So it doesn't matter how many people it takes to kill them, as long as either the Zoe or the Swain are alive, Misfits, uh, Vitality should be able to win out the fight. And the peel from Misfits is Galio ulti or Poppy ulti. Those are like the two tools you have. It's really hard to know where you're ulting as a Poppy when you can't see anything during Nocturne ult. It's really hard as a Galio if you're not right next to AD carry to actually peel and use your abilities to save him. So Vitality's Nocturne pick alone already makes it difficult for Hansama to play and stay alive. There was talks in the pick and ban phase from the analyst disc about things like Morgana could have come in here, the black shit could have been a key thing for him. Tom Kent was available, I believe, in the draft, would have been a very different setup all of a sudden and also can be difficult to use against Nocturne. So there is really not a lot of ways you prevent Vitality from reaching your back line. Question is, can you survive for long enough? This is actually the kind of game where I want our glass on Kai'Sa can, of course, build AP on Kaiser. That's what we've been seeing a lot in the sort of recent patches. 8.12, 8.13 is all about this AP Kaiser going towards the Nash's tooth next, then Rabadon's or the Zonya's Hourglass, as you say. Tarnit goes down in the bottom lane. It looks like, actually, Gilius might be starting up the Baron by Kill himself. He's standing around. there. Maxdor's not on this side of the map. Does have the, the Weaver's Wall if he wants to come across. There's the far side alteration to spot them out. Zuka looking for a little bit more damage onto it with the Paddle Star. Mickey has the flank with the teleport. Now, Misfits. We've seen Mickey flank perfectly in the past. There's the call of the Forge God. Paranoia comes out He's as well. In there. All jumped on it towards the Kaiser Hansama running for his life, but he will get taken out by Gilius, and that's one down for Vitality. He will fall as well. Still a one-for-one -one trade. Attila comes in with the demonic essential, but the Weaver's Wall will cut him out of that fight in Vitality. Only trade one for one. It's the same one for one though. Gilius always tries to get a kill onto Ansama. Fight continues. He pulls in Kamu shot out Fari with the taunt on that backline. Jack drop. All caught up, but it doesn't matter. He's too tanky. Hero's entrance comes in to save Alfari. The double knock of Jacko eventually will pull some more Cabo Shard. Great stuff here from Alfari and Senkos playing the fight of their lives. Attila, though, and Jizuke, the two carries left alive for Vitality. Once again, it's Alfari. It's the Englishman who's carrying Misfits through this fight. Gets another kill for them, and Alfari comes up huge. And Sama TP straight into it. Oh! oh! Goodbye, Italian Stallion! Hello, Senkux! Oh, this is straight to Baron. This is Gilius' chance. He lost so many of them last split. Maxlo stole them from him. Senkux will kill this one. There is no flash for the Nocturne. No way for Gilius to get into that fight. That's the Baron for Misfits, and they have come alive in this game. Baron, 5,000 gold ahead, 25 minutes in. They're looking to break down Vitality. These fights are so, so close. Hansama will always die when Gilius jumps in at this point in the game. It's the five-man engage. Once again, the death ball coming in. 
He goes down. You can't use the Galio ult properly. Great stuff, though, from Liz. As you say, you can't use the, the Galio ult properly. Means he has to use it at the end of the fight. But look at Alfari and look at Attila in this fight. Yeah, the really important thing was the ulti from Alfari knocking a Swain away. That was about to I'm unleash happy. onto everyone. Did not happen. He had to walk back in. Ulti disappeared. And now he's not as scary. That's why they can go in for re-engage. They actually ignore the Swain as well, because they just try and take down all the different tanks around them. And eventually, Poppy and Galio with Max Law behind them, it's enough damage to kill the front line. Alfari just consistently getting these knockbacks into the wall as well. The stun connects. You can see he flashes in, stuns right at the tip. And then a hammer shot is enough to take out Attila in the end. I mean, it's Max Law who's getting the shutdown kills, but it's Alfari that's doing all the work. And Jizuke steps way too far forward at the end. Flash taunt, maybe just didn't think Sankuk's had his flash left. Misfits with that get the Baron. You can see who needs an AD carry. All you need is a tank top laner to win the fight. <laughs> oh, they're going again! Gilius actually always going to jump on in towards the Senkux here. Not usually the target you see, but Vitality just trying to take whatever they can find. Alfari is up towards the top side of this fight. Senkux down to about half. Now Vitality needs to disengage. Alfari here all? comes the hammer and knocks back Attila. Alfari will look for the knock back into the wall here if he can get it as well. Steadfast presence into the midst of all of Vitality. Heroes entrance will come down and stop Cabo Shard as well. He's going to be sacrificed in the back of the team. Mickey lands the knockback onto Jim. Zuke, the death from below, alongside Senkos is enough. And Misfits are cleaning up these fights. Yeah, big problem for Vitality is the fact that Hans Hammer's bought a stopwatch, which means he will no longer die when Gilius jumps in. So they tried to pick a new target. You picked the Galio. Not going to happen. You're not going to kill him in time. And that now means you actually run out of damage in these fights, because every time a dealer tries to carry with his ult, Alfari knocks him away. And with that, Misfits will be able to break into towards the base of a Vitality as well. The first inhibitor will fall. The game just exploded to life after a single mid lane fight, it feels. Across the course of this game, we've seen the fights slowly skew in favor of Misfits, and now they are absolutely on top. Yeah, that last fight we had where they traded at first Gilius for Hansama, and then after Misfits won into the van, that's really the one that yep. got this entire advantage for them. The one right after with just one kill, obviously, they already now have the items they need. They have abilities, or sorry, they have items. That just means that when the initial engage happens, you just press Outlast or Stopwatch. You wait two seconds, Nocturne ulti will start disappearing, and then you turn around to fight. Double Soul Stealer as well on their side. That's a little bit of swag. That's a little bit of undefeated swag right there. Much better item now as well compared to in the past, oh, because you do bad. actually get the bonus from it much earlier. I believe it's already on 10 stacks, or is it 15? Uh, I think it's 10, but you will check that for us. I will definitely check it for you. And yes, it is indeed. 10, you get 10% movement speed. Yep, so 10 stacks. It is already you, in place for Senkooks. You can sense it there. You know what's going to happen after the game. Maxwell's going to walk up to Gilius and be like, mate, 20 stacks on my Medjai's at the end of that game. That's how you win the banter battle. It is actually true. Between the jungles. If you win with a Soul Stealer fully stacked, well, you are officially the coolest person in the world. Cash money in my Soul Stealer. You know what I miss? I miss the very old item called Leviathan. Oh, that was such a good item. The stacking tank item gave you HP. There was an AD one of those as well. Uh, name. Sort of the occult. Yes. That was what it was called. Such a good item. Now, once again, Misfits just trying to siege this tower. There is poke from Vitality. Always have to be aware that Jizuke can nuke someone if he catches them out with that Paddle Star. Misfits will take their seventh tower of the game with it a 10,000 gold lead to Fisher. And you're correct, and you have to be with everyone. Good words. All right. Whippo was in the last game. Uh, that's true. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> I learned from you. You have to, of course, be fully aware of the fact that Jizuke can nuke you down. It just won't really happen. It's not happening in the summer split. This is not the split of Yuzuki. This is really the rest of Vitality was trying to carry. You know what's good against Poke, though, Deficio? Yeah. Cloud Drakes. It's and true. Misfits just got their first Cloud Drake. There's another Cloud Drake coming up next. And I know you are our resident <laughs> Cloud Drake enthusiast. You know the thing now, that tilts me the most is that stupid picture is on every lower third with my name. As soon as you said it yesterday, I had that specially made Heaven, for us. Uh, of for course. Us, in case of we course. got double clouds. Well, Cloud Drake, yeah. Oh, baby. What a Drake. No, that's that's water Drake. That's ocean. Uh-huh. 
Uh, movement speed is nice. It is nice. Especially when you're trying to get away from a Nocturne who's jumping off towards your face. Yeah, but then you're in combat almost instantly. I mean, yeah, but Cloud Drake still works in combat now. That's stats. true. So Extra little Up to date here on the new, sta exactly. on the new patch. Because uh, I love Cloud Drakes. <laughs> I know you do. Cloud Drake enthusiast. Anyway, Misfits. 8,000 gold ahead, almost 9,000 at the moment. Stacking up those Medjai Soul Stealers. Basically, just looking to break open Stacking the Stacking them up, baby. Oh, yeah. Looking to break open the next inhibitor here from Vitality. Baron Buff has worn off. They're clearing out all the vision Vitality has. They're not going for a 1-4, which is what I expected them to, although it looks like Alfari might be going down towards their bottom lane now. Just trying to group up and maybe catch out Vitality. In the I drive. mean... If you do split up, Nocturne like, will get a chance yeah. to force a fight where you can't react in time. So if you stay five as Misfits, at this point, I don't think you should be able to lose. Uh, Alfaris ulti will always get rid of at least one member on the side of Vitality. Nocturne cannot one-shot anyone other than, what, the Pike? No, he can just jump away. Yeah, it's true. It's very difficult as soon as you get those Zonyas, as you say, to uh, actually catch out anyone. Hans Summer went for the Banshees, has the stopwatch in case he does get caught out. Banshees will help him so much against Jazuke, against Kabu Shard's engage, against any engage from Jack Troll as well. Baron up in 45 seconds to fuel. That's the last hope here for Vitality. Oh, look at Afari on the side. Here we go. Oh, he didn't do anything. I, I looked at him and I was expecting movement. He moved quicker than usual though, because of Cloud Drain. It's true. That could have set up a great engage. That, see, that's what you were thinking of. <laughs> that's you didn't that's why I engaged. said. Yeah. Like, Look at him. He's got the little. He's got the little wind particle behind. That's him. the oh. part. Uh, oh, uh, that's what I, I wanted to highlight there. Yeah, I knew he wasn't going to engage. Yeah. Afari uses only defensive ult. <gasps> Look at Hansa at the side. Oh, he's so quick. Gusty. Wait, wait, wait. Pike engage. Anyone engage? No. Oh, no, Flash, Bone Skewer is a possibility. Mickey misses it onto Cabochard, places the pink ward in the bush. Jack was on his way up here as well. First, it's on Alfari, he's going to run in. Paranoia used. Senkus is in that front line though. Gilius jumps into the midst of it all. Call of Forge got used. Gilius has to jump away. And now Alfari will knock back Jack Troll and get the engage in that he needs. Attila already down to half. Jizuke jumps in, pulled back with the skewer. And that might be a skewer through the heart of Vitality. Hans Summer goes down though. And Vitality have their shot. They have a chance here to win this fight. But you can still see the tanks alive for Misfits. Mickey has to jump away towards the top of the fight. But Senkux caught in the midst him. of it all. And he is done for. Alfari at full health. But Misfits. Losing two men. Such a big mistake from Hans Sama. He still has flash and everything. He stepped too close, popped the stopwatch, and then once he got out, he was still in range of Attila's ulti. Fight might not be fully over yet, but the fact that Hans Sama managed to die here despite avoiding the first initial engage, not good enough. He's picking this Kaiser here. He got to late game. His team has been protecting him and winning fights for him all game long. And now it's time they need him to start carrying. He's the one who's supposed to deal all the damage. Senkuk's lost his stacks. Oh. Down to two on the Soul Stealer. It's a disaster. See it again, though. All in engage from Vitality. Kind of last chance. Have to win this one. If they lose here, the base is gone completely. And the initial start is actually fine, but look how Gilius instantly has to jump out. And now just pay attention to the Kaiser. Hans Sama is right in the middle of your screen, dealing damage for now. But notice, actually, never mind. We put right back on. He died, everyone. That's what happened. Gilius doesn't have the ultimate. No flash on him either, and the Baron's gone. So, uh, right, so that we, was quick. We killed the replay just to see Baron die. I mean, that is it is peace. important for us to see Baron. Die. It's actually a uh, production trick to save your star players. We don't show their mistakes. Oh, that's true. So we notice how we showed him dealing great amounts I, of I damage. I can never remember Hans Summer ever dying. Actually. We saw him deal the, all the damage there you see yeah. on your screen. Perfect positioning, dancing around, and then we cut away. Yeah, that's all that matters. Production tricks. We do. We did the same with Reckless, which is why we haven't seen him <laughs> oh. for a little while. Oh. I miss Reckless. I miss him as well. Yet you made fun of him. He's not even here. Oh, yeah, that, that was a low blow. I you are fully. I apologize. Let's, let's get back onto the game at hand. Misfits 9,000 gold ahead have the Baron for themselves as well. Three minutes left on that buff. Something we didn't talk about is the fact that Vitality can get these Orn upgraded items if they want. So as the game does progress, they will have a slight lead if they ever get towards those six items. And you know what they got? Double Infernal! No Cloud Tricks, oh. but they do have Double Infernal on their side. So that is another little advantage. And important to highlight, the stopwatch is gone on the side of Hansama. That was used in the last one, he still died right after. So Gilles actually will have a chance a to return to the first 15 minutes of one shot the Kaiser as often as possible. There's a Banshee to protect him a little bit, but that should still not be enough if Gilles gets onto him. So there is an opening here for Vitality in the next few fights. 
Sankos is not in this fight. You feel like... I actually really just wanted Outlast and not Banshees instantly. Yeah. Just rush the Outlast. I understand that. It's okay. It's not what he's done. Bone Skewer used onto Jack Troll. Sankos is pushing up the mid lane as well. Inhibitor has respawned there. Jizuke trying to clear out the wave and just dodge around. All they're trying to do is mitigate this Baron buff for the moment. If Vitality can last through this, maybe they can last long enough to survive in this game. Sankos now pushed in all of the mid wave. Yeah, there's an open in hit there. Maxlow will just zone them off the turret. Should be another one then for Misfits. At this point here, might not even look over. We get the fight. Forcing the fight, calling the Forge God. The ram comes down, but immediately stops. Oh, it's the vision of Ansama. Ansama down towards the bottom side in a superb position. We'll rejoin the fight. Maxlow gets one. Now our bow is in the midst of them all. Ansama jumps in. The killer instinct kicking in. And you can feel that the knockups and the damage is coming. Misfits take three vitality. Run back to the fountain. And Misfits look to close out this game. Ansama was sitting in a brush out of vision. So Gilius could not engage onto him. He had to pick a different target. Sadly for Vitality, that just means they lose the fight instantly. Suzuki trying to do what he can against all five members of Misfits, but even he and Jack Troll cannot stem the tide of the Misfits crew. Looking to go undefeated, 8-0 is calling, and Misfits are answering, hello, we're the best in Europe! And that's when you know that you're truly the best team in your region. When you can take a draft that is very hard to play, you can see that your AD carry is dying a few times to all the engage from the enemy team, and yet other members step up around you. Senkooks had a great game. Alfari's ultis in some of those fights were crucial, knocking Attila away. And then Misfits gets that first Baron. That's a big one to get a large goal lead, gives them a bit more time in the game. And then the last team fight, smart play. Nocturne can't hold you if he can't see you. It's true, it's true. Great positioning from Hansama. Important to note as well, Max Law finished with 23 stacks on his Medjoy, so didn't ah, quite get it fully, fully stacked. Yet. Just needed two more, just a single kill from somewhere would have got him fully stacked. But I still think he has the banter rights over Gilius, who, although a great level one, a great invade from uh, Vitality, never really showed the performance they showed right at the start. No, I think like, this was a very classic Vitality game, you know. Good early game plans, sets the enemy jungler behind, wants to play a comp that can group as five. They were in the mid lane multiple times looking for plays. They're not playing side lanes, they're playing around mid. And it worked initially in the fight here, but again, I just gotta give it to individual play on the side of Misfits was what saved them, not the draft or anything. The fact that some certain key members in fights could then step up when the AD carry was already dead. Crucial, crucial win for them. And yeah, this is one of the big ones. This is one that feel great. This week, they played G2 Esports and Vitality. That's two of the teams in the top four, and they beat both of them. And they were convincing wins as well. They weren't sort of wins where you win one random team fight at the end and somehow are able to take an inhibitor. In both games, it felt like they knew exactly what they were doing, how they wanted to play their game plan, and it worked out well for them. And you have to remember the player of the vote expire. Uh, player of the vote. Uh, I vote for the player vote. of the game vote expires in a few minutes, so be sure to give us your favor at LOL Esports on Twitter. We've narrowed it down to the Englishman Alfari, the Englishman Max Law, and the Dane Sankux. Why did you lose energy in the last part? I'm. I, see, I work with this Danish guy. Great guy. Eh. Let's talk about Misfits, because they're also great. Yeah, let's talk about them. Uh, we can definitely talk about them all the time, because that's kind of what happens when one team is 8-0. That's true. Uh, I think nothing really stops them from a 9-0 uh, at the moment. and. It's not something we see often. No. Uh, you already, when we have this kind of setup, longest win streak they've ever had now, you always start thinking back to 2015 and Summer Split Fnatic with Huni Rain over the 18 0 they had. We had this discussion earlier though, and you think Misfits are going to go 16 2. It I is think still very go unrealistic you go 18 0, but they're currently beating everyone and they're playing very well. Okay, well, for more on today's action, let's head over to Shocks and the EU LCS post game lobby.